So uh, my name is Philippe, Philippe Zawati. I, I'm, I'm uh, actually I'm, I'm the CEO uh, of a company, an investment management company, which is called Mirova, uh, which uh, is part of a big banking group, uh, which is called Natixis. Uh, and which is <clears throat> within the second second largest banking group uh, in France, and uh, and this company Mirova uh, um, is uh, one I have launched, created within Natixis seven years ago, eight years ago, uh, and uh, um, I, 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 mean, I used to, to, to work. I mean, I've been working in a, in a, in, a, in finance and in investments for uh, now uh, uh, long. I mean, thirty years maybe. Uh, and uh, uh, 10 years ago, I, I thought it was time to, uh, to rethink the way we were doing this, um, uh, doing our job and doing the uh, investment business. So finance, you know, uh, uh, has been uh, at the heart of, of the, the difficulties that we have gone through, uh, especially during the, the big financial crisis in, uh, in 07, 08, I mean, 12 years ago. Uh, and, uh, and finance, was seen and is seen to a certain extent today uh, still uh, as uh, one of the uh, most problematic part of the uh, of the economy because uh, uh, the the way the the the, the finance uh, is behaving uh, lead to a lot of inequalities to uh, I mean to all the 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 the, the, the big uh, uh, challenges environmental and social challenges that we are facing today. Uh, and so I thought it was time to, uh, to rethink all this and to use finance uh, as a tool in order to solve our problems uh, and not to create new problems. Uh, you know, uh, investments uh, during the financial crisis, uh, again, 10 years ago, uh, was um, uh, criti criticized as being uh, too opaque, uh, too complex. Uh, uh, to a certain extent, completely disconnected from the real thing, from the real economy. Uh, and so uh, what we have tried to do uh, uh, in, uh, in doing uh, responsible investments uh, within Mirova was to reconnect finance with the real economy. Meaning, uh, coming back to what the, 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 the core, I mean, uh, of the idea of investment is. What it is investing? Investing is just uh, a question of trust. It's a question of trust between uh, people who have, the, who have the capital, who have money, and who are, are trusting other people uh, who have projects, basically. So uh, when you want to invest, you're, uh, when you're a saver, you want to invest your money, uh, the, what you do is that you select uh, companies, people, teams, projects, that you think uh, that these, these projects are reliable, sustainable, uh, are basically good for the uh, general interest as well. Uh, and you want to trust the people who are uh, really uh, uh, bringing this project and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and making this project. So this is basically what we, what we try to do. So Mirova is now uh, an investment management company uh, with uh, 150 people. We are based in, uh, in Paris mainly, but also in London, Boston, uh, Singapore uh, and uh, and Lima in uh, in in, uh, in Latin America, and uh, all we do uh, is to uh, uh, take into account with a very strong conviction uh, the environmental and social impacts uh, of the investment we are making. So I want just to give you a couple of examples so that you understand more clearly what does it mean. Uh, what, it, what it means, uh, basically, we, we uh, first we invest in a, uh, uh, in the uh, equity market, so uh, in uh, uh, the financial market. So we invest in the equity of copper of big corporates, big corporations all over the world, and we select these co the corporation into which we invest uh, because we think they add something positive to the sustainable development. So it could be some new products, innovation. Uh, new uh, new way of uh, uh, of doing business. It could be about health, about technology, about new uh, um, uh, new uh, uh, agricultural systems. Uh, it could be uh, uh, energy, of course, renewable energy. It could be uh, 
clean transportation, it could be uh, electrification of vehicles, it could be uh, I, the hydrogen uh, also investments. So there are a lot, a lot of innovation because we know that the economy is changing a lot today. We have to do this transformation. We have to do this transition into a, 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 a less uh, carbon intensive world. Uh, and all this needs massive investments. So this is the first, first way to do it, investing in innovative companies. Then the second uh, way to do it uh, is through uh, uh, financial innovation and especially uh, uh, the, uh, the bond market. Uh, so when you uh, uh, lend money to, to, to the companies uh, and there is a very interesting new market, which is called the green bond market, where the companies uh, uh, are funded by investors who uh, um, make a kind, kind of deal with the, with the companies. So they, uh, they fund the companies, uh, providing the fact that uh, the money they, lend, they are lending, to the, they lend to the company is directed uh, into green projects. So that we call green bonds. So again, it could be the same kind of, uh, of projects, renewable energy, clean mobility, uh, uh, agroecology, and so on and so forth. So that's the second, second part of what we do. Then we also invest directly into projects. Uh, so this is something we, we do uh, in France with uh, uh, what we call the, the social economy. Uh, so it could be uh, uh, investing in uh, uh, social affordable houses, for example, or, uh, uh, or circular economy. Uh, and then we also invest directly into projects, uh, into renewable energy projects. Uh, meaning, I mean, solar plants or uh, wind farms. So we are directly in investing into the project. Uh, and, um, and then we have also developed uh, these last couple of years, what we call uh, the uh, natural capital investing, uh, which is very, very interesting, very important because uh, we know that at the, at the global level today, um, there is a lot, lack of investment in sustainable agriculture, and especially we, you, you, I mean, you have heard a lot about, about deforestation, about the fact that we are uh, uh, losing a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, for, forest uh, areas. Uh, today, at the global level, we, uh, we, there, there is probably about 12, billion, uh, 12 million hectares of land which are degraded every year. This is uh, the, the measure that we, uh, that, that we can rely on. And, uh, and there is an objective at the uh, UN level. Uh, this is one of the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, uh, which is the land degradation neutrality uh, objective. That means that uh, the, uh, one of the objectives is to, uh, to reach uh, zero degradation by 2030. Uh, and to do this, to do this, we we know that uh, we need to restore degraded land because probably we will continue to degrade land uh, everywhere in the world. But if at the same time we are able to restore degraded land, then we can maybe uh, uh, reach this objective of uh, land degradation neutrality. So this is uh, one of the of the goal we have. Uh, uh, taken for, for our fund, which is the land LDN, Land Degradation Neutrality Fund, where we invest in reforestation uh, in Latin America, for example, or in, uh, or in Africa, uh, or we invest in uh, sustainable agriculture, uh, reshaping completely the way uh, the farmers are working in, uh, in Peru or in, uh, or in Ivory Coast uh, in, uh, in um, coffee or cocoa, cocoa plantation. Uh, making some new uh, arrangements, new uh, um, agreements between the farmers and the big corporates who are looking to uh, 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 securize their supply chain because they need more and more uh, sustainable and labeled uh, uh, agriculture products. So that's what we, uh, that's what we are doing. And, and to do this, we, uh, we invest the money which uh, comes from different sources. I think this is a question you, you may have. Uh, where does the money come from? The money comes from diver, di, di, different sources. Uh, one of them is uh, big institutional investors like insurance companies, pension funds. And these companies 
are uh, more and more interested to integrate ESG, environmental, social, and governance, uh, typically into their, uh, their decision-making process. And, uh, and we, uh, we have also money coming from uh, retail investors, I mean, uh, savers, uh, everywhere in the world, in France, uh, in Europe, in the US as well, uh, in Japan, in uh, other, other countries. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, we uh, we have these, these different sources of, of money, and we see that uh, the demand uh, for a, a more sustainable finance is growing a lot. Uh, and, and the reason why it's growing a lot, uh, it's uh, uh, not only because uh, maybe there is a uh, this uh, uh, I mean. Uh, the fact that uh, the, the savers are more and more, uh, you know, uh, aware of of the of the importance of the investments and the, and the need for investing in uh, in solutions, but also, uh, and we have to 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 understand that as well. Uh, it's because uh, these investments are also very profitable, uh, and 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 this business case, I think, it's important to make it to to to, to make it because. Uh, uh, for long, uh, it has been uh, uh, said by, by the, I mean, the professional uh, in the finance industry, uh, we're saying that uh, responsible investments probably means lower returns and lower performance. Uh, and maybe it was true, I mean, five or 10 years ago, but today it's not. Today it's not because the world is changing, because the economy is moving. And so all these innovations, all this uh, uh, transition uh, in, uh, uh, from a, a carbon intensive to a, a low carbon world uh, are also very interesting, important opportunities for investors. And, and so that's the reason why also we, uh, we, we can have this, uh, this very important growth in, in the finance, uh, in the sustainable finance industry. Uh, Anna Catherine, if you have any question or if you have uh, any question, uh, from the, from I the... do. I've got lots of questions for the audience. I know the um, the schools and the students are on anonymous settings, so if just down at the bottom of your screen there's the Q and A button, ask your questions in there, and I can make sure that we put those to Philippe while he's here. Um, in all of the investment that you have, and I, I know you say that it comes from all sorts of sources all around the world, do you get a sense of where the, the greatest enthusiasm is for sustainable investment? Are the parts of the world or countries that, that are focused on that more? Okay, so tra traditionally, uh, uh, Europe was, uh, was ahead. Uh, and, uh, and I can say also that, that, that France, uh, France was clearly ahead also in Europe. Uh, but today uh, it's uh, much more, uh, I mean, um, Leveling, I mean, everywhere. I mean, uh, uh, what we see in the US, for example, is very, the, 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 the trend is very, very strong. So, of course, it's not exactly uh, the same kind of uh, uh, focus which is made uh, in, uh, in, in, in different countries. Uh, for example, in the US today, these days, uh, we are just near the, the, the first anniversary of the, uh, of the death of George Floyd. Uh, and uh, there is a very, very strong focus on the S of ESG in the US, meaning the social part and the inclusion. So uh, uh, how can investors take into account uh, the uh, uh, inclusion of I mean, all kinds of people in, the, in, in, in their organizations uh, and especially minorities? So, uh, so, uh, uh, so this is a strong focus. Uh, in, uh, in Europe, uh, we, we have a strong focus on, 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 uh, on, on an environmental topic today, uh, and especially uh, also because the, the regulators are, uh, are uh, also playing this game. And uh, we, as you know, there, there is a very strong uh, move at the uh, uh, European and EU level uh, on environment, and especially on the, uh, environmental finance, with the, the uh, um, creation of this uh, green taxonomy, uh, which is a, a list of uh, the uh, assets which are considered as green uh, in uh, in Europe. And so uh, this is a regulation. So regulation also is uh, helping to to move into 
into that direction. So uh, I, I, I will, to answer your question, I think it's uh, uh, more and more global, uh, but with different of uh, uh, sensitivity to uh, one or another topic, depending on the countries. Fantastic, thank you. And, and having been part of this world for a number of years, I know you said you were in, in sort of more traditional finance beforehand, what do you see as being the next step in this revolution? Where do you think this sort of sustainable investment and, and focus will go? So that's a good question, of course, because uh, as, as I mentioned, we were one of the pioneers uh, about 10 years ago with others, with a couple of others. Uh, and, uh, and today, uh, the, 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 this market is completely uh, uh, mainstreaming. I mean, uh, so everybody is speaking about ESG, all the big uh, asset managers and big banks uh, uh, are uh, at least uh, communicating on uh, uh, their uh, ESG policy. Uh, and so uh, today the question is uh, whether this movement, uh, I mean, this movement basically is a very good one. I mean, we were waiting for this for years. So we, of course, we are very happy about, about this mainstreaming, but it could also uh, lead to a certain extent uh, to, to uh, uh, what we call greenwashing. Uh, because when you have big institutions, you know, managing uh, thousands of billion of euros, uh, just to give, so that you understand, I mean, Mirova is uh, a company uh, where we manage uh, 20, about 20 billion euros, okay, 20, 20 plus billion euros. Uh, the biggest asset management in the world, BlackRock, uh, manages about 7,000 billion euros, okay? So uh, there is a huge difference be between uh, some of the biggest mammoths uh, uh, of, the, uh, of, of the financial industry and the pioneers, the very uh, convicted players that we, that we are. And so the question today is, uh, what will be the, 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 the future of this? I mean, do we see, uh, will we see uh, the big ones really moving into ESG, uh, in that case, uh, it would be great. And, and the pioneers like us will be pushed to uh, move into, a, 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 I mean, stronger conviction and probably into what we call impact investing, uh, or uh, will it be only greenwashing, meaning a, a kind of dilution of the, uh, of the sustainable investment uh, into the uh, business as usual. So this is a very important question. Uh, and, and for me, greenwashing is, uh, is something uh, very difficult to, uh, to, to identify and to assess because uh, greenwashing is mainly when you have a big institution, let's say managing uh, uh, thousands of dollars, uh, thousands of, of billions of dollars. And this big institution is doing some very, very, uh, Impact, impactful uh, management, very interesting things, but only on a very, very, very small part of their assets. Uh, and, and then this institution uh, is communicating 99% of their time on this very teeny uh, thing they are doing. That, that, that is what, what I call greenwashing. You know, sh showing the best part of what we do, or what 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 you do, uh, and not really uh, spreading uh, this uh, this impact management on all what you do. That's that's really, I think, a, a big question. Uh, and so, uh, 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 this is the reason why we need probably uh, much more uh, also uh, awareness uh, in, in uh, within the savers and the public awareness be, uh, uh, also. Uh, uh, among, uh, I mean, the young people and the people who are going to work in this industry in the future. Uh, and also we need regulation in order to uh, help uh, the, the, the community to really uh, stick to this objective, which is to really uh, uh, move into the uh, more sustainable finance. Thank you. That was a very comprehensive answer and actually preempted some of the questions that have come through about greenwashing. There were a couple of people asking what that is. I know it's something that um, a criticism, probably rightly, that fossil fuel companies get um, about focusing on 
three wind farms that they have rather than the hundreds of millions of tankers that they've got of, of oil yeah. out yeah. on the sea. Um, that, 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 yeah, that, that's a, a, also a good question, which is a question of transition, you know, because uh, responsible investing uh, for years was, I mean, and this is what we have done, I mean, the last 10 years was basically uh, investing in green assets, in the, investing in green companies or very committed companies. And to a certain extent, it's easy to do, you know, uh, you select the, 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 the uh, renewable energy and uh, hydrogen and uh, wh whatever, you invest in it, uh, it's profitable. So it's relatively easy to do it. Uh, the, the, the more difficult question is, uh, how can we push, how can we help uh, the, the old world, I mean, the, carb the, uh, the carbon intensive world to transition? Uh, and, and, and that's difficult because uh, we, we cannot just, uh, you know, uh, hide uh, uh, our, our eyes and, 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 and tell, okay, I, I don't want to see this part of the economy. I mean, this part of, of the economy is a major one. It exists today. Take just the example of the mining companies. Uh, you, can, you can say, uh, you could say, okay, mining companies, it's bad. I don't want to invest in it. Uh, this is the extractive world. I don't want it anymore. We want more circular economy. So I, I, I don't look at it. But the fact is that we, today, uh, the, most of the innovation in, uh, in renewable energy, for example, uh, need a lot of uh, mater materials, I mean, which is coming from the, from, from the mining industry. So, uh, so we also need the mining industry to evolve and to become more sustainable. The same with the oil companies. How can we help, if we can, uh, the total and excel of this world to move, but really move, uh, from, uh, from being an oil company to becoming uh, um, an energy company, a diversified energy company? So that's, I think, the question which are more and more interesting to, to, to look at. And it's also about engagement. It's not only about just selecting the companies you want to invest in, but also engaging with the companies. And is that something that's happening more? Do those companies feel that, that engagement with their investors and their shareholders is, is something that they need to be doing more of? Do they feel that level of responsibility? I think so, I think so. I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, when, when you uh, listened to uh, a uh, General, uh, 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 General Assembly meeting, uh, I mean, the, the the part of the of the time which were which was dedicated to uh, environmental and social topic was about nothing, about zero. Uh, today, uh, it represents sometimes uh, I don't know one fourth or one third or maybe more of the of the discussion. Uh, so uh, so I think it's really uh, becoming more and more important for for them. And also, I mean, it's not only uh, engagement with the, 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 the investor. You know, I think that sustainable finance is powerful when it is linked and very uh, in line with the movement in the in in the uh, uh, in the society. Okay, uh, and so for 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 the oil companies, the, the oil companies, what I mean, who do they have in front of us today? On one hand, the investors, finance. On the other hand, the young people who are maybe going to work for them, but maybe not. And this is a very, I mean, a huge problem for, for these companies, attracting talents. So if they know that at the same time, it's difficult for them to attract talents and to attract financing, then that's becoming really an issue. That pain point is really critical, isn't it? And I know it's something for the construction industry that um, is helping, encouraging, forcing them to become more aware of their sustainable goals because they can't bring in a young workforce because people don't want to work for companies that they think are doing bad things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have a question about um, that perhaps links a little bit closer to home for you. Um, we had a presentation yesterday about 15 minute cities and the developments that are happening, particularly led by Paris um, and some of the work that's going on there. Is that movement something that you see happening elsewhere in the world? And, and how 
sort of around you, do you see that coming to life in the post-pandemic world? Um, that's an interesting one. Uh, I, uh, actually, I, I, I know quite well, uh, I don't know if it was uh, Carlos Moreno who was speaking about uh, 15 minutes city or? Uh, we, ha we had his video, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I know Carlos uh, quite well and, uh, and I mean, I mean, this concept is really powerful, uh, and uh, and uh, it has really spread everywhere. I mean, uh, in the world, there are a lot of uh, lot of uh, uh, feedbacks about about this. So I think it's a very interesting concept. Uh, we, I, I think the, the, the also the, the and this is what Carlos said as well. I mean, the, the pandemic uh, is not only a, a health issue. But it's clearly uh, an issue for the, uh, the the organization of the of life uh, in in cities. The the fact that we are uh, living in cities uh, clearly lead to uh, will will probably lead to more and more uh, problems like, uh, like like pandemics because uh, it's uh, I mean all we have seen during the the, the this crisis is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, just uh, uh, how to live uh, in uh, in in, in uh, Areas where we are a lot of people, I mean, uh, and so how can we uh, can can we deal with this? So, so I think uh, just, there is a kind of contradiction today uh, between, uh, on one hand, uh, the the environmental issue, uh, which clearly push us to uh, concentrate the people into uh, into uh, uh, urban areas, uh, and uh, on the other hand, this kind of health issue, which. Uh, uh, where we see the difficulties of li or, or, of living a uh, uh, lot of people in uh, in very narrow uh, narrow city centers. So uh, so I, I think it will li clearly uh, uh, maybe uh, lead to to a very interesting uh, discussion and how to uh, to uh, to combine these uh, these different uh, different issues. And I think for. What, for industries particularly like construction and the built environment, but actually for the young people on this call today, this is a chance perhaps to shape a real world that you can see around you that is environmentally and socially and financially responsible in that sort of 15 minute city space. Yeah, certainly, certainly, certainly. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's a very, very um, exciting challenge at least. <laughs> And there's plenty of challenges for us. Um, given the, the age of many of the young people on our call today, they're probably 14, 15 years old, still finishing out at school. Um, at that age, what advice would you give to your younger self based on all of the things that you know now and the world that you've experienced? What, what are your sort of key learnings from that? Uh, yes, uh, I think, you know, it took me uh, 20 years uh, after the uh, the end of my studies to uh, uh, understand that it was possible to combine uh, my deep personal values with what I was doing in my job. Uh, and uh, and 20 years is too long to uh, <laughs> to uh, understand this. I mean, uh, because I think you can combine um, and give a sense to what you do in your job, whatever the job you, you do. This is, I, I don't think there are some sustainable jobs on one hand and unsustainable on the other hand. I think you can bring sustainability and bring sense and bring ethics to uh, every kind of jobs in uh, basically uh, every industry. Uh, and so uh, um, my advice would be, do what you like, but do it with uh, bringing as sense uh, as you can in, uh, and, and, and also be coherent be between what you think outside of the job and you think uh, and what you do uh, as, as, as an employee or as an entrepreneur or whatever. 